Oh, wow. Well, Sleep again. What the hell is this doing on me? I, I can't see. I can't even see you, and I know this is your doing. Of course it's me, you fool. You're mine this year. And you made me back into a human, but you put a mask thing over my head? Correction, that is a stormtrooper helmet. If I am Darth Vader, then you are my stormtrooper. It is a permanent attachment and cannot be removed for now. Also, you can't see while wearing that helmet. Why go through that effort? You didn't want to be a puppet, and you are now not a puppet. The fact that you made me blind while wearing a stormtrooper helmet raises more questions. At least I'm a human being. Look at it this way. We are now both masked. Only my mask is way cooler, but I digress. Today's topic will be games for non-gamers. Non-gamers? What the hell does that even mean? Everyone likes a game here and there. You will see. Your guest will be, well, your wife. Hi. Uh, honey? Is that you? Yep. Thank God. Honey, you have to help me. This asshole has been keeping me hostage for... Oh, honestly, I've lost track of time. Nah. Magic, dear boy. I've used the same magic that has transformed you to keep her always with a mentality that everything is okay, that you are fine. Her beautiful mind is always reminding her of something to do whenever she thinks of you, and it keeps her distracted. You have to bring my wife into this too, huh? Oh, quiet. She's safe. Isn't that right, Becca? Yep. I'm feeling fine. Hi, twin sister. Hi, other Becca. How are things? My husband's wearing a Darth Vader helmet, he's obsessed with your husband, actually has him hostage, and made him wear a Stormtrooper mask that blinds him. <laughs> Aren't they all the same? Well, we will leave you two to it. Well, I guess we have no choice, honey, but to do what this guy says. I think it'll be great because we haven't really hung out in a while and this will be good bonding time. Plus, I can see and you can't because of the Stormtrooper helmet. <laughs> well, you always know the more positive of the two of us. Eric, you'd consider yourself a non-gamer for lack of better phrase, I guess. Let's tell them about all the stuff we've played together. Sounds great! Telltale games are excellent for non-gamers. Becca in particular got really into The Walking Dead when it first came out. I had received the first two or three episodes for free from PlayStation Plus, and we got hooked. I really loved the show. That is, before it became a bit repetitive, and making my own decisions in the Telltale Walking Dead game seemed like a cool concept. Yeah, and I had recently gotten into Telltale games because of Back to the Future and Jurassic Park the game, so it just seemed like a natural thing to flow into. I wasn't really into the gameplay, but I really liked the decision-making aspect. My hubby would control the character and do the quick time events for me, and I'd tell him what to tell the other characters or what choices to make during the critical moments. Yep, we ended up buying the whole season and playing through it, and what a fucking epic ending it was. We had good times. I love playing games with my wife. Aww. The next game comes from a type of game genre similar to Telltale Games, with the exception that dying in the game doesn't end the game. Games like Heavy Rain, Until Dawn, Beyond Two Souls, and Hidden Agenda are examples of this narrative-driven, non-game-over genre. Jeez, is there a better way to describe that? Seems a bit wordy. But you like wordy. Well, yeah, but not in the context of universal classification. Seems a bit much. Yeah, so I liked Hidden Agenda. You did! Hell, we both did! Hidden Agenda is a murder mystery game that came out last year and has players using their smartphones for controllers as they navigate through the game, making choices and braving those dreaded QTEs. The beauty of it, even if you mess up the QTEs, the game keeps going. Which I thought was so cool. It encourages you to play the game multiple times so you can dive into different scenarios each time. Plus, the game is short enough so that it's almost like choosing to watch a short film every time you play. 
They even ask you to break out the drinks during halftime. It's tailor-made for an excellent co-op, party, or even a solo game. Maybe one day we could play with a larger group. Hell, <laughs> we even gave it as a Christmas gift to one of our friends to spread the word. Time will tell. Journey was a big game for the two of us as well, and it's pretty good for those who don't really dabble in gaming too much. We had played the previous two PS3 games from that game company, so Journey was a no-brainer to get. My favorite part was how it encouraged you to play through the game with a second online player when you couldn't communicate with them in any of the ways that you were used to. You had to really think. Plus, I liked making my cape longer and prettier. I remember you showed me stuff I had totally overlooked during the initial playthrough, which honestly made me appreciate the game better. Eventually, the game was re-released on PS4 and looked prettier, so of course we played through it again. In fact, we did a full playthrough of Journey, which you could find right here. We'll just put the link in the description. Oh, yeah, that would probably be for the best. You know, me being one blinded on it. Can you ever see? It'll pass. You know, I know it's the magic that's influencing him, but I'm seriously being held against my will here. I haven't seen sunlight in ages. It'll pass, dear. <sighs> Let's move on. Ah, the Lego games. Specifically, Lego Harry Potter is what Becca and I got into. That's right. These LEGO games are fantastic for all ages, and the LEGO Harry Potter games were no different. After finishing the core story, well, I didn't stop. I kept playing, collecting all the items, and unlocking the hidden levels at the end of both games. Except for that major glitch that didn't unlock jack crap for me at the end of the second game. Yeah, I remember that. You put so many hours for nothing and were pretty pissed. Yeah, I was mad, but I have every intention to replay it and do it all over again. Damn, that's dedication, babe. Hell, I'd even say that's the spirit of a hardcore gamer. Huh. That's it. And that's what's been bugging me. This whole concept of gamer and non-gamer, casual gamer and hardcore gamer, it's all so fucking arbitrary. There is a game for everyone that makes you a hardcore gamer, that stirs your spirit. It's, there's no separation, we're all united, god damn it! All true! Yeah. Well, alright guys, on that note, this was all of our experiences of all the games that we've played for non-gamers. And you know what? It really is silly to think of all this stuff. It's all just arbitrary. There's a game for everyone, like we said. And on that note, I will leave. What? Well, yeah, I have things to do. I'm, like, really busy these days. Well, all right, honey. Thanks for hanging. It was fun stuff. No problem, Bob. Take it easy. I need to go find out who's killing the unicorns. My money is on Tribbleberry the Troll. Wait! Ah, oh, shit. Never asked her for help. That's because of my magic fool. Ugh, oh god, you. I don't even have magic. You've never had magic before. I don't, but all will be revealed soon on who is helping me. It's Drunk Max, isn't it? What? He's the only guy we know that could do magic and stuff. Within a budget, of course. Uh, well, that's not here nor there. We'll just have to see. I I could be throwing you a curveball, right? Y yeah it's still mysterious. It's totally Drunk Max. Guys, it's Drunk Max. Uh, he's the guest for the next episode. Watch it. You'll see. Well, I'll be drunk or something, because that's what he does. Sorry! Forgot the blanket! Bye!